What if I were to tell you Comcast Xfinity has a hidden internet only package with speeds beyond imaginable? What if I told you that they typically don't tell you about this package that is available in most if not all metro cities where Xfinity is? What if I were to tell you they have plans to increase it to 10,000 megs per second, also known as 10 gig? 10 gig download speed and 10 gig upload speed. Stay tuned, guys. Hey, everyone. My name is Austin, also known as Mad Gigabit. I wanted to let you know that I am one of the very few customers of Comcast Xfinity that has their Gigabit Pro package. Gigabit Pro was a term that came out in about 2014, 2015, and it was the first step that Comcast came out to offer greater upload speeds and download speeds. Originally in 2015, the Gigabit Pro package was merely only $150 as a promotional rate for the first three years, and it offered 2 gigs download, 2 gigs upload, 2,000 megs down, 2,000 megs up. You know, Comcast has grandfathered some of the older packages that kind of have more upload speed than others. Uh, because right now, the greatest upload speed is around 35 to 40 megs on their, um, their gig package. They have changed the name a couple times between the different divisions from the west to the central to the northeast to the southeast. It's kind of all the same though. However, the Gigabit Pro has changed within the past two to three years exponentially. Uh, speeds were 2 gig symmetrical and then went to 3 gig symmetrical. 3 gig symmetrical is now 6 gig symmetrical. And there is already a few customers who have 10 gig internet speed. Uh, the 10 gig internet speed has been talked about in labs and recently they have been uh, upgrading accounts already to kind of test it out and, and check it. And mind you, this is all for only $299 a month. Now, let me hold you. Let me stop you right there. You may be like, holy crap, Austin, $299. That's insane for internet. But look what you're getting. It's fiber optic. It's dedicated. You don't have any slowdowns. You have a team of literal experts that will get your service back online within four hours. There's a four-hour SLA or service level agreement. And you also get a static IP. You technically get two static IPs. And I'll jump into that further. But it's $20 a month for the rental fee, which, mind you, they're giving you like a four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 rack. Like a... Like a rack mount router um it's kind of like a switch basically but the way they have it is they basically connect you into the closest head end which is like a mini data center uh that all these major fiber connections come in and they give you two connections out of that they give you a one gig down one gig up ethernet handoff over a vlan or a virtual virtual local area network they give you a vlan um they I only know this because I spoke to the engineers quite a bit and they kind of let me know how all this works. So they give you one gig down, one gig up. It's its own IP address and that's what they'll actually connect their Netgear R8000 router into for your Wi-Fi. And then they will connect the main fiber speed uh, over SFP+, Plus, which is a special adapter. Uh, it's technically Ethernet, but it's not the RJ45 plug like cat5 everyone's used to it's its own it's a uh, lc usually they're L om3 om4 cables it's fiber optic now that has its own static ip and its own vlan they're two separate networks so you don't gotta worry about like I ap isolation between the two they're, they're, they are completely their own and what a lot of people with the gigabit pro will do is uh because they want the speed, obviously, they're paying for it. They'll go with like a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro. That is a feature, is the UDMP Pro. Uh, the special edition one will work. A Microtik will work. I'm actually using a Sophos XG550. It's a very expensive data center router, but any of the Sophos will work with PFSense, OPN Sense. Um, basically, any sort of open source router you can use, it works. Um, but let me go ahead and show you some of the equipment and I'll get into some of the political boundaries and technicalities here. So let's jump into it. 
Okay, so this is all the equipment. I'm actually going to get into the technicalities of it here soon. But they basically run a multi-strand fiber cable. And this is fiber. It's uh, it's kind of hard. And this goes from here outside. They can either tunnel this and bore it in through the ground to come out. That's more expensive because they only pay for like $8,000 worth of an install. Anything over, you have to cover the entire cost. They won't even let you pay the difference. You have to pay for the entire thing. So basically they have the fiber come in and it comes into this little box. And the box here, as you can see, actually has the fiber. So if we were to just pull this all out, we can actually see the fiber that is back in there. It comes out into two usable strands. They do prep it for more if you were to go with that. But this is the fiber strand that comes up into the juniper. I'm going to just slide this back in just so that way we don't lose anything and nothing were to get broken that's the last thing we need out of fiber is to get broken you know but so we have this this is the juniper acx 2100 ac the dc version is direct connect um I, i'm sorry so ac direct current this is uh, alternating current so you'll have two uh 120 volt, 20 volt plugs that they'll plug into an outlet they have it plugged into my Rockville up here, and I can manually shut one off. Um, but this is the AC version. They have a direct connect with uh, positive and negative leads. And basically here is it comes in, and this is 1 slash 3 slash 1. This is the main... Uh, this is the main SFP plus this is an 80 kilometer laser diode uh, for the transceiver that is doing one for upload one for download then I have this going down into my main router I did have this come up into a ubiquity and to a micro tick you could do that pretty much anything you want to do with the fiber you can once it comes out you could directly bypass the Juniper entirely with like a micro tick and put the 80 kilometer transceiver into it and run the VLANs. Um, if an engineer were to give you that information, sometimes they will, most likely they won't, unless you know them. But you'll have the Juniper here. This is what you're paying for monthly with the router. And then you have here one slash zero slash zero. This is the one gig connection. So um, six gigs one gig and they are completely independent separate uh separate ip addresses whole nine yards they're completely isolated now i'm going to go show you downstairs what my rack looks like and for those of you curious yes i did put a two and a half inch patch bay hole through my floor and into the ceiling and it comes along here goes down into this this is the main server rack. And we have that actually come in right here. So this is a Sophos XG550. And basically this is taking my WAN connection here. This is the one gig, this is the six gig, and this is all LAN. And so this is handling the IP addresses, this is handling the DHCP, DNS, basically all of the good stuff and then i just have my servers here for what i host on games websites and everything in addition to this which i have following back in to the server rack now before we get into the speed test and everything like that i wanted to talk about the political rift within comcast so Comcast, which is known as Xfinity, does have data caps for about 70% of the United States. Pretty much anyone outside of the Northeast has a 1.2 terabyte data cap. And this could be bypassed if you were to pay for, oh, I don't know, like 30 extra, 50 extra a month for their XFi Complete. Basically, they are in areas that have congested networks. Gigabit Pro, Gigabit Pro in ear quotes is uh, unlimited bandwidth. I say that in ear quotes because it's not called Gigabit Pro in every area. So basically with this congested data, what's happening is Comcast is starting to kind of divvy up the 
Gigabit Pro into different packages. So out west, certain areas could have it called, and as I've seen this, Gigabit X3. They limit those customers in the west to 3 gigs down, 3 gigs up. Us over here, we have Gigabit Pro. 6 gigs down, 6 gigs up. Some have 10 gigs up, some have 10 gigs down, because they're testing it currently with certain people. Then, you will have people in Central who currently have the 6 gigs, but they're called Gigabit X6. So, Comcast has secretly rolled out plans for Gigabit Pro to come out into certain areas at different bandwidth. So, they changed the name from Gigabit Pro to whatever the max they can supply. 3 gigs, 6 gigs, and now... For those in the Northeast, we're already being tested with 10 gigs. And I wanted to say that I'm not saying over here, you're going to get, you're going to sign up and get it for 10 gigs. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is it's already been put out in the Comcast Labs press release that they are soon going to be delivering 10 gig uh, speeds in 2023. I have a funny feeling that come 2023, most of the Northeast is going to have the Gigabit Pro as 10 gigs. And that's just because a lot of us have already seen tests being performed uh, on our systems with the speeds of up to 10 gigs. Um, that's why I'm just saying what I am. I'm not saying you're, we're going to be guaranteed 10 gigs. I'm just saying that's what we have been uh, tested with on our systems. Uh, plain and simple. That's what they're testing and that's what we're seeing on speed tests. Now, what I will say is that it is a long process to get. It could take anywhere from as short as three months to get up to a year. It depends on your area, who the engineers are, how quick the Gigabit, Gigabit Pro team works uh, on your order, uh, how quick the site surveys get done, how quick the approvals get done for the build-out cost. But at the very end, it's not bad service at all, and I can definitely recommend it. So I just wanted to show you what my current speed is. Mind you, as I said on Reddit and everything like that, they're currently testing speeds up to 10 gigs. So this is just the current speed that I am seeing right now uh, for both my download and upload, which means that this can most definitely change. This is not... Um, this is not set in stone. This is just currently what I see. And it does fluctuate a lot. But currently right now, this is just right around what I am getting. And you'll see, even as you do multiple speed tests, this is nothing new. It just fluctuates. Um, you know, as, as you see, it was just up to 6, 7. Now it's down to 3, 4, 5. So, it, a lot depends on the speed test server as well, because sometimes those are not the most accurate way to test. And even just doing this, you'll see, you know, our three different tests that we're going to do, they all fluctuate. And they're all using the same test server, the same everything, same computer. And it just truly depends on, on what that server is doing, what that load is. It's just strange. Uh, during the day, I noticed it's a little bit better than nighttime, but this is just uh, just the way that it is.